So picture this, you're in the middle of a shoot. Maybe it's a test shoot, maybe it's a client gig. But the kicker is, is that they've hired you to shoot photo and video. So what does that mean? You have to be reactionary, run and gun, spray and pray. You know how it goes. Everything's moving fast and you have to capture as much as possible. And switching between photo and video, that's easy enough. But here's where the problem comes in. Your camera, it's set up to shoot 24 frames a second. Maybe you wanna shoot 30, maybe you wanna shoot 60, or if you're real cool, maybe you wanna get some stuff at 120 frames a second. So, what do you do? Do you shoot everything at 24 or 30 and give up the option to shoot anything slow motion? Or do you shoot everything at 60 or 120 and murder your memory card in like three minutes? Or if you're like me and have an R5, it'll start to overheat in about 20 seconds of shooting high frame rate. The other option is you could pause the entire production to go deep into the menu system to change your settings. So that way you could be shooting everything at 24, but then if you wanna shoot something at a higher frame rate to maybe slow it down later, you have that option. But again, you've gotta go balls deep into the menu to do that. Say you decide to go that route. So you go, hold on everybody, I wanna shoot this in slow motion. You've just annoyed everybody on set because you stopped the production. Because chances are you're shooting with one camera, one lens. It's pretty quick to change a lens, but most of us aren't running around with multiple bodies, unless you're an old guy who's a gearhead or maybe a wedding photographer. But for the sake of this, you have one camera and everybody's waiting. That's where C1, C2, and C3 come in. It's so much more comfortable to do it that way. Why do Americans do this? This is so much better. Instead of getting bogged down in your camera's menu system, you can literally just jump over to C1, C2, or C3. Kind of think of those as like shortcuts. And some of you may know what these C1, 2, 3 are, but for those that don't, this video is for you. A good example is on my camera, I have my C1 set up to shoot 24 frames per second. My C2 is at 60 and my C3 is at 120 frames per second. That way, when I'm on a shoot, and just reacting to what's going on, but kind of knowing mm, I might want to catch this at a higher frame rate. I don't have to go into the menu system and click a bunch of things. I can literally just change it to C3. It makes life way easier and it's way more efficient on set. But let's say you are a photographer. You don't shoot video at all. Are these settings still relevant to you? The answer to that is yes, yes they are. If you're like me, typically when you're shooting photos, you are in manual mode. You're very rarely using aperture or shutter priority. But what if your camera is your employer's camera or if it's your own, but you use it to shoot product photography or something like that where your settings need to always stay the same. Anybody who shot product understands that with brand guidelines, lighting, everything is very dialed in. Time was taken to set it up, so it looks a certain way. And if you are constantly shooting in manual, you're constantly changing your settings. And there's a chance that you could have changed something that when you go back to shooting that product, you forgot to fix it. And now you've potentially messed up an entire series of photos. So what's the solution to that? Simple, make your product settings C1 on your camera. So that way you can shoot in manual mode like you normally do, but anytime you've got to shoot product, you just switch it to C1. And then for example, when you do that, your camera's automatically gonna go to an ISO of 100, F8, uh, shutter 1, 160, and your white balance is gonna be set to whatever your studio lights are. In short, whether you're switching between photo and video or different types of photo or different types of video, utilizing these custom settings is going to help your workflow. It'll keep you flexible, it'll save you time, and it'll keep you from having to go through the menu system every single time you wanna make a change, especially if you're shooting on the fly, which in this day and age, with street photography and fashion and everything that's going on, the majority of the time now, us as professional photo and video humans, we have to be reactionary. We have to be able to just go and utilizing these features is going to help you out in the long run. Let me know if this video was helpful for you. Maybe these settings are something that you have looked at but never really put time into and now you're kind of reconsidering it. Uh, you know, I speak to this being a Canon R5 guy and 
you know, there may be other features on Sony or Nikon that make it easier. Uh, if there is, the Sony people will probably comment about it. But I just, I wanted to throw a video out there that was easy and hopefully helped some people. So yeah, that is my short video on utilizing the custom settings on your camera. Uh, some of you are probably already using them, but a lot of you maybe aren't. And if you are one of those people that does use the custom features, comment below how you have them set up, your workflow, how it's made your life more efficient when you are on set or on location. If you could do me a solid like this video if you found it entertaining or beneficial. I am a tiny ass channel and I am trying to grow. Shout out to my 28 subscribers. Greatly appreciate all of you. And yeah, if you wanna see more stuff like this, obviously let me know. Check me out on Instagram at Chris Petri and I will see you in the next video.